With the United States Congress holding official hearings and even forming a declassification task force to reveal what the government knows about UFOs and other popular subjects, the people of the world are eagerly waiting for an explanation. But not Jake Barber and his team of UFO experts. So, Jake, do you believe that a higher form of non-human intelligence has been visiting this planet? Well, yes, I do. And when you make that claim, Jake, how confident are you that claim is true? I'm 100% confident that that claim is true. The former Air Force operator and contractor claims to be a first-hand witness, directly involved in the infamous UFO legacy program, and has recovered non-human craft in his past as part of a crash recovery team operating in the private sector. USAF Special Operations veteran, former UAP crash retrieval contractor, and Skywatcher co-founder Jake Barber is attempting to catch the strange objects in a non-hostile manner. We have a duty here. We have a moment in time. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're taking a look inside Skywatcher, an initiative so out of this world, you'd think it was ripped straight out of a sci-fi novel. During our time together, there were multiple events that caused me to seriously question certain assumptions I have about reality. Meet the Skywatcher team. With the promise of responsible transparency and scientific rigor, a team of former military badasses like Dan Flexenhar and Fred Baker, tech maestros like James Fowler, multiple PhD holders like Dr. Gary Nolan, and even what they call psionic assets like former Green Beret Michael Batista and Jordan Jozak, are using both conventional and unconventional methods to find out what exactly is occupying our skies. This isn't a spiritual activity for us. This isn't emotional. This is strictly facts and data driven. Applying strategic measurement and signature data collection, cutting edge flight behavior modeling, and data synthesis and verification, Jake Barber and his team of sky watchers are conducting on-site anomaly assessments and performing physical and forensic analysis to create an ever-evolving taxonomy of UAP. There is a global effort and interest in this and a global capability in doing this. Calling UFOs. Yes, really. The Skywatcher team has even considered the possibility of a crash or a controlled landing and is equipped with the tools and expertise to actually recover UAP that they claim to attract or call. We have turned on our equipment that we've customized and created what we believe is a dog whistle and UAPs show up. This calling technique consists of two methods. The first, machine calling, uses custom equipment made by the Skywatcher team that emits electromechanical signals, allegedly luring strange objects to their location. It's a game of chess, right? Now they're actually probing us to validate our capabilities. The second, neural meditative signaling, is conducted by humans, often referred to as psionics, who enter meditative states to attract UAP by projecting intent. At the end of day two, our psionic team made a bold prediction that the next day, we would see an interaction between two different types of UAPs in the sky. Using advanced surveillance systems, premium imaging technology, and these UAP calling methods, the Skywatcher team is recording and archiving validated data for public review on their official website, skywatcher.ai. The Skywatcher Discovery Framework. On Skywatcher's website, you may soon find everything from images, videos, and descriptions of various UAP all the way down to validated data, including infrared radio frequency and radar tracking from each class of UAP encountered, sort of like a UFO Pokédex. This is all part of a six-level process the team refers to as the Skywatcher Discovery Framework. Most UAP reports are at the first level of their framework based mainly on eyewitness testimony, ambiguous amateur videos, and vague declassified government reports. However, this sort of data is not sufficient for independent scientific analysis. So we've, we've, we've seen hundreds of UAPs. Perhaps we're running an event and we have 200 sorties in a day. Using their custom surveillance and imaging equipment, they take a more structured and systemic approach to data collection in the field separating conventional objects like birds or drones from the truly anomalous. You know, it, it, it looked sturdy, it looked heavy, <laughs> wasn't a bird. You know, it, it, if it were an aircraft, any kind of conventional thing that we have now, it, it would have rocked us 
how low it was. All data will then be analyzed, put through multiple hypothesis tests, and after exhausting conventional explanations, peer-reviewed by outside experts. By doing and using those kinds of approaches here at Skywatcher, we're going to be able to collect the data, get it peer-reviewed, not because the peer review tells you that the conclusion is right, but because that allows others to look at what it is that you did and determine whether or not you did it right. Any case that clears this review will be published for public scrutiny in the form of white papers, validated data, photos, videos, and detailed descriptions, all made available on their official platforms. One thing led to another, and now we have what we believe is compelling data on UAPs. What's the end game? With hopes of gaining public traction and interest, the Skywatcher team aims to provide enough data to finally demonstrate the reality of UAP and advance our understanding of what they might represent to humanity. Uh, I'm not a ufologist. I don't believe. I'm not Fox Mulder. I have no faith in UFO, UAP stuff. I have no belief in off-planet anything. Frankly, uh, we follow the data. If they achieve their ultimate goal of bringing their own slice of disclosure to the public, it could unlock breakthroughs in science and technology, new physics that might open the door to new energy abundance, new materials that transform communications and propulsion technology, as well as a new understanding of the nature and capacities of human consciousness, bringing humanity that much closer to the stars. And if we can validate the existence of these abilities completely and scientifically, then that information necessitates an entirely new concept of reality and our place in it as human beings. So far, Jake Barber and the Skywatcher crew have produced two high quality videos outlining their overall mission and showing their unorthodox process in action. There's certain things that the rational mind could attribute to it could be this or it could be that, but there are also things which move in ways which do not fit the normal laws of physics or aerodynamics. The latest installment unveiled nine preliminary classifications of UAP showcasing video evidence, digital renderings, and raw data, laying a foundation to explore all hypotheses and figure out what's responding to their call, or perhaps more importantly, who is responding. I've never experienced anything like it before. Um, I've got over 4,000 hours of flight time, and this has never happened before. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into settings and switch on your notifications. The nine classes of UAP. Class one, Tetra. Named after its tetrahedron appearance, these four-sided pyramids are typically black in color and tumble through the air like a D20, only they seem to move with intent. The class one often spins, tumbles through the sky, craft looks like a black body. It appears to flash pulse multiple times per second. Flying in formations ranging from three to over 20, their chaotic yet elegant flight behavior makes them nearly impossible to track or lock onto with sensor systems. Class two, Tic Tac. Akin to the craft Top Gun pilot David Fravor encountered in 2004, this UFO has been seen in packs of up to three. The class two is the classic Tic Tac. We've seen it in groups of two to three, often flying very erratically. Resembling the famous breath mint, it was initially thought to be a solid cylinder, but it appears to bend and elongate, seemingly shifting its shape in flight. We've seen these a couple years in a row, and usually we see them in groups. Class three, blob. A cloud-like orb pulsing red with internal light, the blob only travels alone. It either teleports or moves so fast it can't be seen, exhibiting no obvious acceleration or transition when changing positions. There's something, maybe perhaps a cylinder kind of in the middle that has a different light like a flame, and then it vibrates and pulses as it moves through space. Class four, beam. Typically seen in pairs, these ghostly orbs are invisible to Skywatcher's electro-optical sensors, but show up in infrared. The class four, seems to only come during certain activities in conjunction with perhaps the class one. They hang motionless like small moons for hours. While some could be misattributed to planets, investigators have captured some making evasive maneuvers when engaged with lasers. Class five, manta ray. Named for its resemblance to the graceful ocean creature, the manta ray tumbles through the air like a leaf, flying against the wind at high speeds. It seems to tumble and rotate as it moves through the sky. 
rare among the nine, it's usually seen accompanying Class II craft before vanishing without a trace. Class VI, Bright Star. This UAP shines bright in the sky, sparkling and flashing with bright colors. Tetrahedron-shaped, it moves erratically like a hummingbird, creating a flickering artifact on radar. Claimed to demonstrate directed energy effects on the team, it's both beautiful and potentially dangerous. It literally looks like a crystal in the sky. Class 7, Jellyfish. Not to be confused with the UAP shown on TMZ's UFO Revolution, this object resembles its aquatic counterpart, swimming through the sky with tendrils trailing behind. It's probably about two meters across that the, the head is purple and black in color, and then it has tentacles. It appears to scan its environment and has shown aggression once attempting to encroach on the team during field work until a manta ray and tic-tac intervened. Class 8, Hornet. Similar in appearance to the jellyfish, but with a distinct payload below it. This dual-body UAP moves like a helicopter with cargo, the upper part in control while the lower body hangs freely beneath. It looks very similar to the Class 7, the jellyfish, except for it's bigger and it's almost like a jellyfish carrying something. Class 9, Egg. Possibly the same type of UAP claims to be recovered by Jake Barber. Not much is known beyond its smooth, egg-like shape. Barber described it as pearly white and the size of an SUV. For now, the elusive egg remains a placeholder in Skywatcher's taxonomy. We have strong evidence that it probably exists, but we don't have data to concisely describe it. We're excited to see what Skywatcher has to show us next. Skywatcher Part 3 will dive into the psionic side of their work exploring the human consciousness aspect of contact. It's going to be about the team that we've assembled. You're going to hear from some of them directly. What do you think of Skywatcher and their unconventional approach to an already enigmatic subject? Let us know in the comments and check out our podcast interview with Jake Barber and Matthew Pines for even more insight into Skywatcher's work. Imagine if we, if we end up proving that humans can willfully adjust the reality around them, that you can have an impact on reality, or that there's something like mind control.